So from a from a labor standpoint, when builders see that and hear that, and they realize, man, this is going to extend the life of my uh, my crew. Um, it's easier for them. They love it. They really start to perk up, and they they think they're onto something. Welcome to the Smarter Building Materials Marketing Podcast, helping you find better ways to grow leads, sales, and outperform your competition. All right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Popniklov, and today we've got a great show lined up for you today. We are really excited to welcome Jim Cotty. He is the executive director of the Georgia Ready Mix Concrete Association. It's a very timely conversation considering everything happening with lumber prices, labor shortages. We've got a lot of hot questions for you. So, Jimmy, welcome to the show. I appreciate uh, you having me on here today. Jimmy, if you don't mind, before we dive into everything we're dying to ask you, can you give our listeners a bit of background on who you are and tell us a bit about the Georgia Ready Mix Concrete Association as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, my name is Jimmy Cotty. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Georgia Ready Mix Concrete Association uh, down here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. I've been the executive director now here for about 11 years. And, and prior to that, I worked on staff with the Georgia uh, Construction Aggregate Association, the Crushed Stone guys, for another five years. So I've been uh, in the nonprofit world, but in the construction materials sector for about 15, 16 uh, years now. Um, I've been, uh, I, I kind of got in at a boom time in 2006, and then I switched jobs to the Ready Mix Association as we were sort of hitting a uh, trough in the economy. And I've been here and kind of watched our guys sort of uh, uh, plug and dig their way out of uh, the recession period of the um, early 2010s. And uh, it's just it's become a real great market here again in Georgia. Uh, and everybody's they're running pretty wide open these days. Uh, there hasn't been much slowdown um, at all the last couple of years, even COVID included here in Georgia. We stayed open for business. And. Um, you know, we were actually, I think, 2020, we ended up being up about 1% over 2019. Uh, 2019 was our biggest year since 2006 uh, to that point. So we've just seen steady growth here. Uh, Georgia's a great place to live and work. And, um, you know, we continue to import people here. So we got to build homes. We got to build schools. We got to build places to shop and play and all that kind of stuff. So you're always going to need concrete. So they call our guys. I'm really curious to hear about the conversations you're having, Jimmy, with builders and those in the development community. Are you sure. having very different conversations today than you were, let's say, even 18 months ago? I mean, yes and no. It, it depends on uh, it depends on where you are, um, which market of the state you're in. You know, the, obviously, the big the biggest issue right now uh, everybody's talking about is the price of lumber. Yeah, and and how that impacts uh, construction. Um, you know, I've I've talked to some of my ready mix suppliers who say, you know, they've got builders in certain markets that are just sitting on the sidelines waiting because I mean they're not building in a market where they can get the return on on the the investment as opposed to Atlanta where prices continue to climb. So building hasn't really slowed down, but uh, certainly there's concern around the price of materials, the availability of materials, the availability of labor is another major issue. Um, and guys just kind of wondering uh, how they're going to build stuff going forward and where they're going to find the people to do it because the demand is still there uh, heavily here in Georgia. So those are the primary issues we're trying to solve. And the reason I was asking the question about the conversations is, you know, cost and price of lumber right now, as you mentioned, is just crazy. We were talking before the show started and the average home, what the cost of lumber is up, what, 24K on average per home for the lumber package. And so I'm curious, are you, when I say, are you having different conversations, is it, are builders considering different types of materials based upon cost as well as availability? And obviously concrete, there's a lot of different use cases for it. And that's a, a shameless plug, but I'm just curious to hear from your perspective. Like, are, are people buying ICF more? Are they considering it more? And there's a lot of obviously other alternatives, but I'm just curious to hear, are people trying new products 
because of the current climate or is it, are you having different types of conversations even above that or beyond that? Yeah, we're, we're absolutely seeing a ton of interest in uh, ICF insulated uh, concrete foam uh, products for uh, residential construction and even, um, even in some commercial multifamily stuff. You know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a product that's been around for a while, but I would probably say in the last five to 10 years, it's really kind of come into its own where people have really figured out how to use it appropriately. They figured out how to educate others. And so really, as, as that sort of segment of the industry has matured, from a timing perspective, we've sort of hit this, this maturity level where we're, we're kind of ready to go big, you know, and uh, it's coinciding with a spike in traditional building materials. And, you know, with, with builders and, and engineers and architects, you know, kind of the tough nut to crack with them sometimes is they're successful with a certain uh, process or material that they become accustomed to. They don't really want to get away from it. Uh, they don't want to be responsible if you try something new and something goes goes awry. So, um, but but money talks, right? So, we're in this environment where people are saying, "Man, we maybe we really do need to start considering this." And um, you know, our industry, the concrete industry. So we we have a nat. I'm with the Georgia Ready Mix Concrete uh, Concrete Association. We have a national Ready Mix Concrete Association, and most states uh, across the country. They have their own state associations as well. We all kind of work in concert with each other. And we have something called the, the Concrete Design Center. And, and the idea is that if, if you're a developer and you've got some land or you've got a project that you want to build, but now you're, it might be cost prohibitive, well, we have the ability through the Concrete Design Center to come in and take your existing plans with knowledgeable architects and engineers who've been designing with ICF for, for long, for a long time and sort of walk you through what an ICF build would look like and what it would do for you. Because really when people think about ICF, they say, well, concrete's expensive and wood's not as expensive. So if you're subbing out the, the wood for concrete, you're going to be more expensive. And, and really what ICF is, it's not, it's not a product substitute. It's a, it's a building system. It's an mm. exterior envelope building system. So when you build your ICF walls and you pour those walls, really you've combined your structural elements, your insulation, your furring, your vapor barrier. You've condensed that all down into one step. And so the labor necessary, you know, you might have a framing crew ready to go, but you can't get an insulation guy out there for a while or vice versa or something like that. So when you're building with ICF, you're really condensing several trades down into one step. And it gives you the opportunity to move faster with your construction schedule. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to have a just a better, more durable, storm resilient, energy efficient uh, structure. You mentioned something, Jimmy, that comes up a lot and that we know to be true, which is, you know, architects, engineers, builders, they are, they're sticking with their process because that's partly how they remain profitable. That's how they protect themselves from a reputation and liability standpoint. There's hundreds of reasons that we know why that's how they need to operate. Obviously, the availability issues and continued issues with labor shortage have thrown that for a bit of a loop. As you're talking with these professionals about what it would look like to build with ICF instead of lumber, when do you start to see it click? What's the aha moment where for so many of them, that one takeaway is really what starts to convert them to selecting ICF? Well, let's talk about the, let's talk about the labor, you know, um, you know, I just said, uh, you know, you're condensing several steps down into one when you're using an, an, an ICF uh, building system. You know, when you when you talk to builders, really where they kind of light up is, um, you know, they think about well, where are we going to where are we going to find the labor? Where are we gonna, who who are the people that who's our target audience in sort of training to to build with this stuff? So you know, you have concrete masons do very well with this. Uh, concrete form workers, 
uh, carpenters even, and then even existing framers. Um, was talking to a guy yesterday. Uh, his framers got trained, you know, so they could do both. He's like, they don't, they're not even interested in doing wood framing anymore. And I'll tell you why. Um, you know, you think about as the workforce gets older, think about the the wear and tear on the workers moving concrete block around, the weight of that, moving uh, wood around, and how much labor intensive that takes. So you could do, you could use various ICF. And, and you could have one person basically moving and stacking a 12 foot square area of interior and exterior wall at the same time. You know, these guys love it because it's so easy to handle and move around. And then they're stacking it. And then all, and then when the uh, pump truck comes, you know, they're, they're uh, managing the poor. So from a, from a labor standpoint, when builders see that and hear that and they realize, man, this is going to extend the life of my, uh, my crew, um, it's easier for them. They love it. They really start to perk up and they, they think they're onto something. What we have found is people that, that gravitate towards this stuff. And once they do it a couple times and they see the ease, they see the time, they see the savings. And then say you like, you're a, um, I don't know, say you're doing multifamily, you know, you think about having ICF, ceilings and floors and walls well that's going to be silent you know for the people living in there they're not i mean they're not going to hear the people next door or under them or over them um you know like in multifamily, some studies have shown that you know icfs they're they have 10 percent less vacancies than the stick built stuff and then they have the opportunity also to charge more in rent because of the quality of their building you know the the energy savings there are tremendous the silence is tremendous so Guys like that, once they kind of dip a toe in the water, we find that they they almost want to hoard it, if you will, in the sense that they don't want to tell anyone their secret sauce on 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 their new construction system. Well, what I what I think that you're saying is interesting, Jimmy, is that you know even with labor shortage and with you know the cost of materials right now, you know the category that you're playing in in concrete and ICF, you're still finding ways to sell value proposition in a way that or present your value proposition in a way that people are hearing, you know, whether that's sound or you're thinking about ease of construction. Uh, I'm curious to get your perspective though, on how are you trying to encourage a younger generation to get into labor, like to get into, you know, whether that's being, you know, a Mason, some capacity or, you know, even maybe even outside of the concrete industry, are you seeing any other categories or, or uh, industries that are, getting people into the trade because that's really, I mean, we have to not just focus on ease of use today, but how do we get more people into it tomorrow? Sure. Absolutely. I mean, we, we have other nonprofit uh, organizations we partner with. Um, the construction education foundation of Georgia has done a tremendous job for, for decades really in sort of promoting trades, uh, you know, in, in all various forms of construction. And, and they have partnerships with various uh, high schools where they have programs throughout the state, all over the state. They have a very large uh, uh, trade show, if you will, every year where different segments of the industry sort of set up booth space, if you will. I mean, we're there, you know, road builders are there, uh, the mining industry is there, electrical contractors are there, HVAC guys, mechanical guys there. So they, they sort of, at least in Georgia, We've, we've sort of looked at them as a partner uh, in terms of um, just sort of letting folks know that uh, there are alternatives to going to the four-year college. And, you know, for us as ready-mix producers, you know, our biggest labor issue is drivers, right? Interesting. Um, but from the tr- – and so from the trades perspective, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it's, it's, fi- it's finding the people and the skilled people that can do that. I mean – so the young people, we, we do these construction fairs. We, uh, we have programs in schools that we partner with on various, uh, uh, at various times during the year. And, uh, and, and, you know, whether it's providing concrete to actually do something hands-on, we've, we've had members that do some of that kind of stuff. Um, and so it's, it's a real partnership. Like, you know, the general contractors are really bought into it. And so they're the ones that kind of, they sort of lead us, you know, the GCs are going to be looking for people of, you know, they, they need every trade on the job. Right. Um, 
whether it's their own people or whether it's subbed out. And so they're, they're very big on the education promotion piece here in Georgia, and they do a good job of making sure that their ready-mix partners and others are involved in, uh, in promoting our industry, our, our broader construction industry to these schools. You know, Jimmy, you have such a unique viewpoint from where you are and the connections that you have and conversations that you have with tradesmen, with different pros in the channel. As you think about the conversations you're having with them, the questions and pain points that they're going through at this time, are there any manufacturers whose marketing or messaging or connection with the pros really sticks out to you that you think is doing a good job reaching them? I mean, in the ICF world, I think there's maybe six to 10 uh, uh, quality block manufacturers. So it's kind of a small world, but really, you know, with those guys, um, their whole key is education and they all have what they, they have various certification programs for their um, products, right? And, you know, the idea is that they want folks to be successful with this product, right? Because that will yield more demand for block. And so each of them have programs in the house to, to more or less certify you. I mean, this stuff can be promoted as like a, almost like a DIY type of product, but you know, the more education and knowledge you have about it, the, the, the better you're going to do um, handling it. So I mean, these guys, they do an outstanding job, Nadura, Fox Blocks. For people that are doing it for the first, second, third time, I mean, they come out and they, they, they hold your hand as much through the process as you need or want them to because they have a vested interest in you having a, a, a good performance out of your product and out of your people. Uh, they want to see that happen. So they, they really bend over uh, backwards to ensure that, that uh, projects go well. There's tons of resources out there um, through them. Our own RN, NRMCA, again, I'll mention uh, the Concrete Design Center in terms of uh, just making people understand uh, what they're dealing with before they even start start stacking block, you know, uh, everything in terms of uh, uh, from from cost and, and various other savings on down. So uh, we're doing, we're, we're, uh, our industry is partnered with Habitat for Humanity, both here in Georgia and nationally. And, and uh, we're about to kick off a Habitat build uh, over in Athens, Georgia. And we've kind of walked uh, the local Habitat chapter through this process. We gave them the, the full boat in terms of a, a design assistance report, uh, helping them understand, you know, the various cost savings they may experience. I know the family want, the family that's going to live in this house is super excited about it because once it was explained to them what ICF was, it was kind of like a sort of a no-brainer. It's like, why would I not want to live in a house that's, you know, more resistant to tornadoes and it's going to cost me less on my energy bill every month and stuff like that. So that's the consumer aspect of it that, that people don't know um, just how well, much I like that. you can save. And- yeah, I like that idea of partnering with you know, Habitat for Humanity or other organizations like that, because it's it's not only a way to get back, but also a good way to get your product out there in the hands of people actually might be building or in that space in some capacity, because you never know how that story might get passed along, you know? Yeah, well, you know, I for me, I think when I look back sort of on the history of ICF, Zach, to me, I think one of the problems the industry always had in sort of promoting it was traditionally it was large custom homes that had been built out of ICF that really, you know, a, a very small percentage of the population is ever going to have an opportunity to either build or purchase and live in. And it's, for me, it's more like, how do we get this more mainstream? How do we get this into markets where the price point is going to be available to 70% of home buyers out there, you know? And so we're, we're doing a 15,000 square foot home, custom home in one area of town. But really the one I'm excited about is this 1,500 square foot home over in Athens. It's going to be, it's going to be simple. It's going to be easy, but it's going to be so nice for the people that live in there that, I mean, you think about this home, you know, you mentioned young people. How do you get them interested? Well, you know, you talk about efficiencies in homes and, and how to be sustainable Imagine building a home where you're going to need, 
you know, 50% less energy to operate the home on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I, I think that's a great, it's a great narrative. How are you getting in front of that builder to share that story? Is it happening just because you know, lumber is so price prohibitive right now, or are there other things that you're doing to go, Hey, we actually think you can charge more, or we think that there's a new opportunity if you were to consider it with this type of, you know, homeowner, what are, what are you doing to, to break that noise? So, so there's, there's different ways that, that we and others uh, have, have approached this issue. There's, um, you know, what, a lot of what we rely on is uh, our own ready-mix supplier members. They have even broader relationships with the, with the building community than, than even we do in our, our own office here. And so they'll, we educate our members on some of the programs and things that they can do to put in front of customers. So like I've got a guy out near Lake Oconee uh, he's got builders that are kind of sitting on the sideline and, and I'm saying, and he's saying, how, how can we get this guy working? I said, well, let's, let's go talk to him about ICF. I mean, you've got the relationship with them. Let's set up a meeting. Let's go out and, and sit down. I can bring in some other resources if need be, but let's let him know he's got some alternatives. You know, even though we run our own association, a lot of us and, and me and my colleagues in other state chapters, you know, we try to get involved with our various local engineering associations or architectural associations or um you know we just did a we did kind of a zoom cast if you will with the local uh home builders association here uh about icfs and just got tremendous response and even for uh, the people that jumped on the call the people that couldn't jump on the call i mean for two weeks afterwards we were getting emailed about how can we get a recording of the call and whatnot so um you know, I try to build those relationships at the nonprofit level um, because I know that I can provide material that can kind of go out in mass to those membership organizations. And then we rely a lot on uh, just suppliers in the market that say, hey, there's, you know, there's a, a guy that's he was going to do a, a project. He's put it on hold. Can we can we get some stuff to him about ICF and see if that would trigger some interest? And uh, th so that's generally kind of how we do it here and how most of my colleagues, I think, do it, uh, particularly in the Southeast. That's great. Jimmy, this has been excellent. Thank you so much for coming on the show. If our listeners want to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, I mean, you can just uh, visit our website, uh, Georgia Ready Mix Concrete Association. It's GA, like Georgia, GA concrete.org. And I appreciate your time today, Zach. And, and, and thank you guys for having me on your show. And for our listeners, if you like this content, make sure you go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Popnikolov. Thanks, everybody. Bye.